Hi, my name is Rabbi Lisa Kingston, and this time of year we're all challenged to reflect on where we've been and where we want to go. And the song makes me think of those themes. Got a couple small dreams left in me. Little bit of pushing, it's all I need to get from where I am to where I want to be. Little bit of purpose. in me trying to break free little bit of pushing it's all I need I've gotta believe no more putting off like I've done before this I'm Rabbi Heather Miller, and it's a pleasure to join you as you reflect on each of the days of the month of Elul. Today is the second day, and I would like to share with you a teaching from my book called Resolutions, a Practical Guide for Self-Repair. Resolutions is spelled with S-O-U-L in the center of it, Resolutions, Resolutions of the Soul. And this teaching is a teaching that comes from the Babylonian Talmud from 1,500 years ago from Tractate Shabbat page 33b. And in this page, we learn about a story of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yohai, and he retreated into a cave with his son for 12 years to escape the Roman decree that said that no one should teach Torah and would punish anyone who did. There they buried themselves up to their necks in sand and they studied Torah for hours upon hours every day with only one carob tree and the light of Torah to sustain them. When that Roman decree was annulled and they were able to once again teach Torah out in the open, they emerged. But at that point, their Torah knowledge was so potent that everywhere they would look, lasers would stream from their eyes and they would destroy anyone and anything that they would encounter. Suddenly, a divine voice revealed itself by asking a rhetorical question in order to correct their behavior. It said, do you intend to destroy my world with Torah? At that moment, they returned to the cave to study more and to temper the fierce judgment of the world that often comes with that kind of punctilious learning of the laws of Torah. The idea is that though the Torah is filled with ideas for living a meaningful life, strictly adhering to them may incline one to judge oneself and others harshly. The heart of Torah study should never be used as a destructive force. Instead, Torah should be used as a generative tool of positivity and improvement. 
So even though self-examination of behaviors of the past year might incline a person toward critical self-analysis, one should not go overboard and self-flagellate. Be kind to yourself. The gift of the new year is around the corner and the chance to make it good, positive, and productive is nearing. Love yourself as the divinely inspired creation that you are always on that path of continued improvement. A few ideas for practice. Write a list of the actions of the past year that you seek to improve in your year ahead. Secondly, balance that list with a list of actions that you're proud of from this past year that you hope to continue in the year ahead. And finally, we can all express gratitude for the ability to introspect. What a gift it is. Blessed are you, creator of the universe, who has given us the ability to distinguish between the sacred and the ordinary. May you be blessed on your journey over the next 27 days. Shana Tovah.